if I let you in my life, you're not there for no reason. And it's not too often it's a new person. Mm. So once I said, oh, this new person, she be like, who is this? And, okay, call me back. When I call her back, well, who is this person? Why are you talking to him? Blase, blase, blase this, blase that. Like, my circle is small. My circle be the same people. Once I let you in, we move as a unit. I was telling my homie yesterday, like, your problems are my problem. Like, if you needed to get together, I needed to get together because I need to push you to get it together because we a team. Don't come over here with that bad frequency. Mm. Law of attraction. So, like, I'm just big on my love. Like, I'm big on my love. Yes, it's a mind thing at the same time, but them things work together. Like, no, that's a fact. you can't love nobody with no sense. You can't have no sense and love somebody. That can go deep, too. You can't even have no money and love nobody. <laughs> so, like, it's just it's just deep now. Like, I think it's I'm crazy. Just, I'm just, like, very stingy with my sincerity. <laughs>
we all both here on different circumstances, but I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> we are on different circumstances. I just want to say it's a pep world if you hate and you just living in it. And shout out to y'all for making a good essay because I showed them then. <laughs> See, I ain't going to lie. You, like, you, you're probably a little bit more humble than me because I'm definitely coming out here like, man. I'm like, man, look at it now. Like, I, remember when, I, I remember a few years back. Yo, my going to get cut. In fact, they going to cut my. <laughs> I remember a few years back, I applied for I applied for Howard University. Them denied me. Now they pay me to be here. Look at life. I'm just coming up talk. Yo, Mike gonna go. They gonna come on. They gonna be like. <laughs> they gonna be like. And then the DJ's gonna be like, Pat. Like they gonna like, how how, how, you how know, do you say I you come pop up? my. Sh I might pop my. Sh I'm in good spirits today though. Mm. I feel real good right now today. I mean, there's a lot of things to feel good about. Good about though. Right. I mean, I feel like you had a, a lot of success. Early too. Amen to it. Mm, amen. We I feel like still early. just getting started. You just dropped the single. Left right, left right. Right before that, you had a project that I think went number one on like iTunes. iTunes? Yeah. Yes. That was like what, what last year. It was actually a year and a half ago. Yeah. I really like set my ass down after that project because um, me being a freestyle girl when I first started making music, I used to make songs for my diaphragm and mm. i was a cheerleader in high school so i had to learn the like the whole science behind making like any type of voice sound come from your diaphragm mm. so by the time i'm making freestyles my voice is like deep as hell though oh. no it was a tie it was deep like i was on songs like what it is sugar pips near damn near like <laughs> i was in the comments arguing people all the time so after i made pretty and paid 2.0 and i gave them that version of me that was like the last time i gave them old pap um, deep voice pop and I noticed that my music was transitioning mm. so last year I really tapped in and I was like I'm gonna go deep with my artistry I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna present this new era of pop Chanel and now I'm gonna release a new one. Oh, that's this hard spring. that's hard Thank damn you. so do you um you said you sat down after the, the, the last project I right, sat for down. a second I said I was still getting busy but like I wasn't getting busy when it comes down to just releasing music because I just wanted my fans to get comfortable with the new sound that I was creating. No, nah, facts. Did you ever feel like at one point in time you was getting like boxed in as this freestyle rapper or this freestyle yes. artist? Yes. I feel like a lot of female artists go through that because once you come so hard on a freestyle beat, the fans expect you to do that on a song as well, which is going to happen, but they just judge it differently from you judging, I mean, from you rapping on a B that Cardi B just released last week. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's different. But that's work, though, when it kind of marketing. It works because, like, it's already a popping song. It's on the billboards. I went on YouTube, got the instrumental. Now I'm just doing my own flavor on it. So it's already something that's already built. Mm. So you just add your own flavor to it. It's like going to the next level. But after that, you got to make your own song now. So facts. that's like going all the way back down. You got to build that up. So. No, nah, facts. It's a couple people that's really good at that. No, nah, it's not a lot. It's a couple people. Do you yeah, I'm going to be one of those people that's, that's winning at it. Top three, top three, like, female freestyle artists. Freestyle? Yeah. <sighs> top three. <sighs> Jeez Louise, I want to say what I want to say. But... Say it. What the hell? What? Say it. Why are you not? Why are you scared to say it? <laughs> <laughs> because. What? Uh oh. Pap Chanel. Okay. Papiana. And Paprika. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Outside of. Shout out to all my girls that's confident like me. I'm selling confidence. Okay, no. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. I'm Outside scared of. to say it because. No, don't be scared. No, oh, I'm gonna I'm hey, encourage it on this show. So I'm turning up my cocky. Uh, listen, I'm gonna encourage. I don't if know you, if, you, if you want another set of three outside of you. Yeah, yeah. Give me top three outside of you. Outside of Pap Chanel and our aliases. Papa Tuli. I said out, outside of the aliases. <laughs> outside of the aliases. Who who would it be? Um, I would say I'm a Retta. Mm. Um, I'm a Retta. Go crazy. I'm a Retta mm. was somebody I watched when I was in middle school. I'm a Retta, I forgot Mulatto. you super young. Mulatto fire. Mulatto go crazy. Mulatto really different, bro. She's crazy. Yeah, okay. Shout out to Mulatto. Congratulations on your success. Everybody, too. Um, and... Uh-oh. I'm happy with my judgment. I'm sorry. Give me one more. Foxy Brown. Foxy? Foxy. I feel like Foxy... Because me, coming from a background where I rap from my diaphragm, I can mm. tell how she executes her bars. 
she puts thought in it, but at the same time, that's rolling off her tongue. Mm. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, of course, super huge Nicki Minaj fan, as mm -hmm. you are. Yo, did she ever reach out to you? Like, did she ever do something? Nikki hasn't reached out to me yet. She has liked a few posts that um, fan pages have made. I mean, like, they posted, like, reposted me, and she has liked it. But she hasn't reached out to me personally. But oh, she like, and she got to do better. It's okay. That's cool. That's your dog. Hey, you can, hey. If you I know can they say, say anything worth having, life's going to take some time, huh? Nah, she got to do better. It's okay. <laughs> all these, all these uh, contests she done did, did you join any? Did you hop on? Yeah, I joined one back in the day. Um, it was her first. Um, good. I think it was good form. Yeah, good form. She did a good form freestyle challenge, and I did it. How you think you did? Looking back, I on think it. I did good. I, I've always looked at my success, and I put it, it put a smile on my face because it got me here today. Okay, I'm here with Jay Hill. What's good? Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yo, so um, but like I was saying, Nicki Minaj is definitely like, she probably one of the illest. To do it, not even I'm not I'm not even gonna categorize as a female to do it. Like she's one of the illest to do it. Her bars, similes, metaphors, crazy. Nicki Minaj, she just makes it look so effortless, and like it's the fact that like she done paved the way for mm. a lot of new artists. That's a fact. That's a fact. And it's to the fact it's like it's to the point now that like she's a goat. They need to come out with a whole new goddamn reward award system for Nicki Minaj. She needs she needs some new shit that nobody can't touch because she's doing. That a lot of people cannot touch. Let me ask you this then. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm demolishing your juice. I'm just saying. Sorry. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Uh, do you still feel the same way about her music? Just music, not her, mm -hmm. right? Do you still feel the same way about her music now than you that you felt before, like when you was in middle school? Yes. There's no way. Yes, I do. I feel like Nicki Minaj sound is like aging beautifully with mm. how today's time is going she cannot rap how she rapped back in the day but hey i'm gonna be so honest with you i've been a nikki fan six sucker free beat me up scotty playtime mm. is over days so i feel like her music has always been timeless mm. so i feel like even if she didn't switch it up she would still be making noise but it's the fact that like she is making music now that is still like just hitting what's the the, the latest song that's like going crazy on tiktok is on radio and um, Nikki song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot the name. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a sample song. It's a sample song. Oh yeah, Rebel Booty Sleeves. Yeah, How'd and she just released a song with Young Boy. Crazy. Nah, she. I ain't gonna lie. She, she. I definitely. And she just did one with Ice Spice as well too. Hey, I bow down Crazy. to the queen for sure. Like for sure. Like she really like one of them. She one of them. A, a long time ago, you said. Um, it probably was like five years ago. You said you ain't want to beef with no. Um. No female rappers. You always want to make music with everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you supporting all the female rappers. Right. Okay. Fast forward. You're like two feet in the industry right now. You're seeing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Do you still feel the same way? Yeah, I still feel the same way. Like I ain't got no time for no beef. Like I don't even see nobody I could beef with. Mm -hmm. And even if somebody want to beef with me, I still want to see the word being in it. Like I don't see the. The reason for me to even dip and dabble in that, I feel like beef now is just another way to get like a buzz. You took the words out my mouth. Yeah, so like I don't necessarily like dip and dabble in that. Like I don't. I, I'm gonna be so honest with you. Outside of rap, I never really beefed with nobody. Like mm. the people I have beefed with, I can count on one hand. No facts, but knowing that it could be like from a marketing scheme, right, and that it probably could give you some extra buzz. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, 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 because then after that, my success is going to carry with that person. Is like, it? oh, you remember when she beat with such and such? I don't want nobody under the sun see another. Beat. When I go, I'm like, that boy. I say that because you're a cancer and we know, we know you're emotional. Not even that. The, the, <laughs> the king cancer, <laughs> king petty himself <laughs> came up off Who of just beefing with everybody. Who? 50 cent. 50 Cent is hilarious. You know what? After my success has, like, you know, just did its thing and it's still doing it and I can sit back and relax and just do shit on my phone, sign a few artists, make a song here and there, I might f talk my <laughs> shit. I still be talking my shit, but I ain't making no, like, sh like talking, like, at a person. But right. as of right now, I've seen what beefing with another artist has done with other artists. Like, I don't want nobody else scaring on me. I ain't nah, plus sense. ones with this month. Yeah. Security, it's only me. 
All right, let me buy, even though I ain't even got to talk to you about But just know, if it's Pap Chanel walking through the manifestation stage, it's just her. No rap bitch under the sun can say anything to me to make me talk back at her. Ooh. Me talking to your damn self. You better go talk to your mom or your n before I talk to that man's my damn self. You feel me? <laughs> she popped her. <laughs> <laughs> she popped her. So let me ask you this. Speaking of like, just since we having fun and the beef, did the, because I don't feel like they were beefing, but the the beef between Nikki and Cardi at one point, a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. Did that make you like Cardi any less? No. No? No, it's been a lot of beefs. Like, I don't been to my family cookout and I see my auntie get arguing with my uncle. I still love them the same after that. So, like, them beefing with each other, I mean, that's just y'all, what y'all got going on. I mean, like, y'all. No, I asked, I asked that because, like, when I, like when Cardi first came out, I love Cardi, right? Mm -hmm. My girl really ain't care for Cardi, but she was like, a, like, she is a super, super Nicki Minaj fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, like, y'all can't take nothing away from this girl. I don't care if she beefing, like, you got to just respect both of them. So I was curious, because a lot of, like, go diehard Nicki Minaj fans mm -hmm. was not rocking with Cardi at a point in time. Of course, it's old because of that whole beef. Man, crazy. Cardi is really like that, too. I, that's my opinion. I think so. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I feel like people have their different reasons as of to why they love a person. I love Nicki Minaj for her music. I love Cardi for her music as well. Cardi actually just follow me. For real? Ding. That's Phew. fire. Crazy. So, like. That's crazy. She's a shoot. I love Cardi because, like, she just remind me of, like, me. Like, she like I, like she was, like, she came from the dirt. Not saying Nicki ain't come from the dirt, but I just feel like when Nicki came in the game, I was super young. And it was mm -hmm. like, I definitely seen Nicki come up, but, like, Cardi was, like, it was just, like, all on. We knew she was a stripper. Like, she was a little, like. I don't want to say a just, bum. She was just You're very right. lovable. Your average girl from the world around the Yeah, like, she, being on Love and Hip Hop, like, you could see that, like, I could probably pull up on Shorty one day. Facts. Have a full-fledged conversation. Facts. And it's not like, oh, no, oh, like, this is a dead-ass superstar. Facts. But she still has that star power, which is Crazy. beautiful. That's why. That was, that was, that's <laughs> what it, but, yeah. I mean. I'm too because like before like I'm a, I'm a day one fan of Nikki and I've been there since day one with Cardi because I was watching Love and Hip Hop when Cardi was on Love and Hip Hop and that was when Love and Hip Hop was like good going, going crazy I'm everybody was watching Love and Hip Hop as soon as that motherfucker came on so like I've always had a love for her okay as well and when she started making music she came out with Bodak Yellow it was just beautiful to witness like mm. I feel like right now we in a world where females are winning as well so the door wide open I ain't hearing on nobody do Thing. I ain't just gonna right. say my name. <laughs> nah, no if you say my name, you you got you either trying to get a feature, you heard some good shit about me. I'm in that manifestation stage, and my manifestation stage don't stop. One thing about it, mm. I can get a billion dollars tomorrow. I'm still manifesting. So like, just only say my name is about some good shit. Right. Yo, I don't so beef with you hoes, but if you want these problems, it gets sticky over here. Like Nikki said, just know we can get sticky like a cactus. Don't let me do my nails, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with an NG. Yeah, I'm, so so you you lied to me off off camera, right? So now I'ma just I'm I'm hey, you you gave me, you put the battery in my back now, so uh oh. So I'm just curious. Just switching the subject for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had sex so good that it made you cry? No, I done made a cry before though. <laughs> I swear to you, like, I'm not going to put it on nothing because this is not the topic what? to be swearing on for, anybody for sex? under the sun. Dude, I made it bust out crying. Like, that man was sad as f Because you was going to leave him, not because of the sex. It wasn't because I was going to leave him. He know that he couldn't f up. And when it comes, yeah, yeah, niggas be crying because they know they can't f up because dead ass be some hoes. And I already showed that man I was the one. Oh, this must have been a boyfriend or something because this hit hard. I don't, f I don't. F Unless you, you, you my something. Let me just say, I'm going to just put up one hand. I won't get to that last finger. Check that with it. Oh, that's, oh that's your body count. I don't know nothing about nothing. You, got, you know you got to multiply times three. No. That's what they no, say. No, I'm a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little girl. I'm 23 and I'm a little girl. I don't know nothing about nothing. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> I'm not. I don't do them type of things. I just started. Okay, that's good. I, I, I hope yeah, so. Yeah, but like me and the man, we was, we was just having our little fling, and I looked up. The man was crying. I was like, 
goes, I would never leave you, baby. <laughs> I was like, I was like, talk to me. I'm big pappy in the bed. <laughs> that give did that like when you see that happen, does that give you like extra boosting confidence? It has to. Like you look up a nigga crying, it's like, yeah, that box like that. I really didn't think too much of it. But now how the situation played out, it really turned me off. For real? I'm yeah, because like that. because like because like him doing that, it showed a little bit of his personality. He that I was a wimp. And I actually kinda liked the dude. Um, a wimp? I don't think I've heard that in the, like somebody used that in a long time. Yeah, he was like a little wimp, and like he was just a compulsive liar. I wouldn't even say a liar to in a cheating way, but like he just lied about simple because just come to Atlanta. I feel like it fucks with their pride because everybody looks like they have it going on. Facts. So he was trying to fit in with that category, and it bit him back in the ass. And I'm not gonna say I left him for that, but I feel like if you lie about simple, you'll lie about some big. Mm. And I didn't want him to get to the point where you f- with my emotions. So I just gave him space. And how he acted off of that, like, I had to put my phone on silent before I got here. He might be calling me right now. Like, he's a wimp. Oh, this like, is recent. And he's soft. Sheesh. Say his name then. I'm saying his name. <laughs> he about to say he's going to watch this. He's like, she talk about, that's going to hurt no, like, heart. Please stop. Leave me alone. Stop calling me. Like, it's over with. Like, you you ain't about sh- Ain't on sh- And I made you cry. In bed and after that. Probably before that, I probably just didn't see it because I was dodging you before. Ladies, if you keep, like, telling that man, no, leave me alone, leave, leave me alone, go with your first instinct. Go with your intuition. Like, when you feel in your heart, you need to tell that man, leave you alone. Don't don't give him no chance when he keep coming to you because, ladies, we be talking sometimes. We be like, oh, my dream man going to come to me. But them niggas that keep running back, even if you dub their ass, like, Mm-mm. He was cute though. <laughs> that don't mean though. Mm-mm. Cute don't mean no more. No cap. Yeah, I, I interviewed somebody. Um, Trap Boy Freddie. He uh, and we was asking. I was asking him if you had to choose, if you had to follow your heart or follow your mind. He was saying that he never, never say follow his heart. Always say follow his mind. He f- feel like following your heart is like not smart. But you say. I'm mean, arguing with a b- right now. So you say follow your heart. Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and we ain't in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. I would say, yeah, follow your mind. But at the same time, you want to feel it in your heart in the first place. Mm. So what comes first, the heart? I'm going to be so honest with you. Like, I wouldn't even let a motherfucker get close to me to be, to feel it in my heart. Mm. Well, any decision though, outside of someone else, any decision that you gotta make within yourself, what 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 are you gonna choose to follow? Your heart or your oh, mind? Oh, if we're talking about that, that's mm-hmm. that. But if we're talking about relationships, like I feel like it's like something in between because I'm not even finna like even if I'm just pissed off at your ass, like in my mind, I hate you fucking left your goddamn clothes on a fucking bathroom floor. Mm-hmm. You pissing me off in my head, but in my heart I fuck with you. I love you. Mm. So shit. It's like uh, that type of thing going on, but like in the streets and handling business, I'm going with my mom first. But like, if we talk about relationships, I feel like it's like something together. Like it's something together. Like it's it's something that always you know, like you know, like some. I'm not gonna lie. Every time a motherfucker do me wrong, mom, I love you less. Mm. Period. I love you less. So like sometimes my heart even be speaking louder in my mind. Sometimes like, ugh, like you ever just rock around? Like you ever be with somebody and they touch you? You only like don't touch. <laughs> So I feel you. Like I've been in relationships before, and like I don't try it so long, and like they start touching me, I'm like, don't touch me, fuck. 
Mm-mm. That gotta be unfortunate though, because it's crazy. Like you know, the closer you are to somebody, the more you get to know them. So the yeah. more the more flaws you see, the more like mistakes they make in, in front of you. And I think that's unfair because as humans, we want to make mistakes too. Think about it. Think about this. I'm gonna paint this crazy analogy. Picture all the mistakes you made within yourself. Mm-hmm. Forget somebody else. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was a lot of mistakes. You had to you had to forgive yourself. Imagine, just imagine, if you could look at yourself and be like, mm. but it's you. <laughs> Think about it. Think about all the mistakes you make. So, so we paint this picture, right? So now you're with somebody. You're learning them, mm-hmm. right? So, of course, before you get with that person, it's like, it's like you like them. They cute. They got it going on. They, they, they this and they that, right? Honeymoon stage, all that. But as you get to know them, they show you how human they are. And then they show you their mistakes. And we are all human. We all make mistakes. Right. So I think it's just unfortunate. I'm not going, I'm not judging. I just think it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. You know what's so crazy? I was just telling, like, somebody the other day. I was like, it's crazy how, like, like dudes, like, I wasn't even talking about me in the aspect. I was just saying, like, how dudes, they be, like, coming out so strong and just, like, putting on this persona for ladies Mm -hmm. and shit, right? And um, once you get with the girl, you kind of like you like her and shit. You don't been you don't went through your okay. I'm mean. I'm that nigga stage. Now you start doing like goofy ass shit. Mm. Like you doing goofy ass shit. Not a bitch being mean to you. Nice. <laughs> nah, like nice. I was just talking about that yesterday. Like this is crazy how like the like the the roles perverse. It's crazy, it, and it is unfortunate. That's why like I feel like the heart and the mind is like a thing that goes. I'm saying together. They go together because, like, if you just stay with your mind, I don't let, I don't make, m- met a, I'm so sorry. I don't met a lot of people that just like so heavy on what they know. And what they know is based off of like past shit. So they put that onto the next person mm-hmm. and they don't even get that person a chance to show them how I could better your life or I could better whatever the fuck you got going on. I could love you how you're supposed to have. Mm. And. <clears throat> Have you felt that? That felt deep, like you've experienced that. Have you felt like somebody passed judgment on you because of their past experience? Yes, trauma is very deep. Trauma is a serious thing out here in the relationship world because people be passing on heavy weight, Mm. heavy baggage from the last shit they went through because they got their heart broke or the shit didn't work out how they thought it was going to work out. I'm not going to lie. Me being a female, I have carried on some trauma from my past relationships. Mm. And it's different forms well, of trauma these what's nowadays. What's the hardest one that that was that to shake off of something that you're probably still going through? Like uh, the hardest thing that you've been through that you might pass on to other guys or even other family members or even friends? Um, The last dude I was um, with, not the last dude. like Not the one. We're not talking about the one. Not the crybaby. Okay, okay. The um dude I was with in like two years ago. He was a compulsive liar. Like, he was living double lives and shit. And it just, like, fucked up my trust. So I was, like, every person that I be with after that, like, I'm going to just fill you out 100% before I even say, like, anything. Like, it don't make me protective over my mom. Like, I'm just a nice person, period. Mm. Like, and my mom, we got a best friend relationship. It don't make me just put my mom up. Like, Damn. Like, I can't even, like, mom. my mom be like, who you on the phone with? And if it's a nigga, I'm like, shit, I'm on the phone with Jesse. I don't say shit, but, you know. I'm just, I can't even be real with my mom no more because, like, my mom, she knows her person I am, too. Like, if I let you in my life, you're not there for no reason. And it's not too often it's a new person. Mm. So once I said, oh, this new person, she be like, who is this? And, okay, call me back. When I call her back, well, who is this person? Why are you talking to him? Blase, blase, blase this, blase that. Like, my circle is small. My circle be the same people. Once I let you in, we move as a unit. I was telling my homie yesterday, like, your problems are my problem. Like, if you needed to get together, I needed to get together because I need to push you to get it together because we a team. Don't come over here with that bad frequency. Mm. Law That's of attraction. Fact. So, like, I'm just big on my love. Like, I'm big on my love. Yes, it's a mind thing at the same time, but them things work together. Like, no, that's a fact. you can't love nobody with no sense. You can't have no sense and love somebody. That shit can go deep, too. You can't even have no money and love nobody. <laughs> so, like, it's just it's just deep now. Like, I think it's I'm crazy. Just, I'm just, like, very stingy with my sincerity. That's hard, though. That's a I just said something. Hey, 
Once upon a time, it was a great poet named Pap Chanel. <laughs> she said, I'm stingy with my sincerity. Chef's gifts. Yo, I think it's crazy. <laughs> I think it's crazy how, like, our past trauma can really dictate our future experiences. Like, our past experiences can really dictate our future experiences because that's what we, that's what we saw, right? So now, right. it's like... I always uh, paint this picture, this analogy of like that's old Raven. You ever you ever watch that's old Raven? Yes. So that's old Raven used to always have a vision, right? And when she have a vision, what she try to do, she would try to like do everything in her power to stop that vision. Stop it or make it happen. Yeah, right. But what happened is everything she did for that vision not to happen would be the very cause of that vision to happen. And it's crazy because like even like like you said you was you was dating a um, compulsive liar, so now it's like that did something to you and you probably wasn't even able to acknowledge it or see it at that moment. Cause now you, it probably turned you into a liar by mistake. Cause now you're not trying to, you're not trying to be yes. sincere to everybody. That's the worst predicament I hate to be in. The worst predicament I hate to be in is if like, I be on the phone with my friend, I tell my friend, hey, like I'm done with such and such. Yeah, we over with. And then the motherfucker call me later the next day and be like, and the dude I'm talking about, he call me, he be like, hey, I, I switched up. And the nigga send me a three-page essay in my phone. And now I got a lot of my friend. Yeah, because it's embarrassing. I got a lot of my friend like, yeah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my bad, I'm good. Nothing. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing like, <clears throat> somebody call you, bitch. <sighs> No, that shit's something, something And it's old through. news, but the whole time, I'm just trying to, got, you know? One of your songs, you said, um, I think you said, don't just tell me you love me when you cheated on me or something like that, after you cheated on me. Yeah. Like, you feel like a lot of times people try to be sincere or the love come after, after they do they some bullshit. After they get caught up. After they get caught up. Mm. That got to be hard. It's hard, but it's not my life. So, like... It'd be hard, but like I'd be like, it is what the fuck it is. You're not no gangster, nigga. You like, you a I'm gangster. You're a teddy bear. I'm you? not no fucking teddy bear, man. I don't. Oh, jeez, Louise, my exes. No, I get low down. I can get low down. I can get dirty. <laughs> like I get low down. Like my mouthpiece is something serious. I keep. I tell every dude that I be with, do not fuck with me. Leave me alone. Like, Craziest thing you ever did to a guy in a relationship after it was all done. I haven't done nothing crazy. I haven't done nothing crazy to do. I don't put my hands on nobody's shit because I don't want you to put your hands on my shit. Um, this mouthpiece is something crazy, though. Shit. What's the crazy thing you said, then? Talk to me. You niggas be... Wait, yeah, yeah. I was I threw a subliminal. This is what I said. Uh -oh. I said I'm going to try to say it verbatim. This, this to the wimp? I'm going to try to say it verbatimly right, what right, I said. Right, like, right, I was... Right, right. He was in another room. I was in another room. So I said, you niggas out here be all on Instagram acting like y'all good dads. And I go around the motherfucker. You ain't called your kid in five days. That's tight crazy on both ends, though. On your end and his end. That's tight crazy. Yeah, and like when, 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 I, when I see a nigga give love like that, I be like, this ain't the shit for me. You get what I'm saying? That's how you say love in the mind tie to tie. Because like, nigga, fuck. Y'all niggas be saying mind over matter. But if your mind was over fucking matter or whatever the fuck you got going on, you would have thought on your fucking head to call your fucking kids, right? Mm. I mean, you don't do it though. So sometimes that love need to fucking knock a nigga before he feel like he ain't he looking like he ain't got no sense. Cause niggas be out here looking like they ain't got no sense. Period. It's not facts. Let's um talking about um mind, right? You see all the I'm just kind of like transitioning, right? Mm -hmm. See all the success you having. Mm -hmm. And you super successful. You super dope. A lot of things, a lot of good things going on. Mm -hmm. You got it, it. Got to be a time where you like get emotional about how far you came. Cause like it, it was a time where like I think you got in a car accident and like you um you're like brain damage or something like that. Right. Do you ever look back on it like man, this I could have been gone and I'm here. Yeah, I look back. At, oh, I'm sorry. You got like a hiccup. Take your time. Mm -hmm, sorry. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I look back at it. When I got into that car accident, I did get brain damage. But um, that situation changed my life for the better. Mm. So I do get emotional about thinking about how it changed my life because it 
changed a lot of the friendships that I have. Um, Wait, why change the friendships you had? Because the car accident I got into, my friends were in the car with me. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of shit changed, but at that time I was like, damn, like that's crazy that such and such doing this and that and the third, but it was a change for the better. Wait, no, 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 no. Don't fast forward. <laughs> no, no, no. What you mean it changed? Like, what? Like, how, what? Like, they stopped being your friend? I won't necessarily say, like, they stopped being my friend. They were still my friend, but, like, their actions after that was just kind of mind-blowing to me because, like, I don't know. I've been in car accidents before with people that I love, and, like, I don't, I don't, I didn't do some of the things that they did, but, hey. No, no, no. You ain't, you got to tell me. You got to say I'm going to just say up. this. Get your cha-ching. So, 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 you got an accident. What, they try to blame it on you? Like, because. Hey, I said it was my fault as soon as I got the car. So, that's that. Um, they try to sue you? Try. Oh, so these are the close friends and they sued you for this. Hmm. And you had brain damage. Yeah, I went to the hospital, stayed in there for like four or five days. I had to go to... Um, well, okay, so this is what happened. I had have, I have got, like, bruises on my brain. I'm not necessarily say that I had brain damage. I had bruises on my brain, mm-hmm. and I had to stay in the hospital for them to monitor them to see if they was going to get bigger or smaller. Mm. They got smaller. So after the five days I was in the hospital, I had to go back literally that next week and go get, like, CT scans and, like, I would probably say, like, every three months I would have to keep going get the CT scans for the rest of that year. Mm. Um, that was 2018, and um, that even changed my life because CT scans are not good for humans. Like mm. the, all that radiation causes long-term damage to your body, and that shit might even hit when you're 80 years old. So I don't even know if it put an effect on me or not. But um, it just showed a lot of my friends' true colors because um, like their actions after that. Because everybody makes mistakes, and I know they growing up now. We all in our adults and stage and. They making mistakes as well right now. Mm. And um, I wish a lot of people could have judged it better than how they seen it or how they felt at the time. Because me being from a small town, people look at things different. And me, I always had like a wide mindset. Like I thought bigger than everything that I was around at the time. Like you could put me in a box, I'm going to think bigger than that box I'm in. So um, people just showed a lot of their true colors. I still have a lot of my day ones around. Shout out to y'all. Got infinity love for y'all. But the ones that got left behind, hey, it is what it is, was what it was. Do you sometimes wish that they were still here with you? Of course. Mm. Yeah, because, like, one thing I've noticed about me and the decisions that I made for my lifestyle, um, there was they wasn't promised at the time. And this is something I've always chased since I got out of high school. So at that time when I was coming out of high school, it sounded like a dream more than something that could be a lifestyle. Right. So they wasn't finna just jeopardize what they have going on to come and support something that's not promised, which is understood. But at the same time, just be there for me and like, Sometimes I would speak my emotions and stuff, and they would just give me these crazy ass excuses. Oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Man, my homegirl called me one time at fucking, like, I, find, I got a homegirl in Atlanta. My homegirl called me in Atlanta, like, last year, five o'clock in the fucking morning. Told me she ran out of gas in North fucking Carolina. Damn, that's at least like six hours away. I did everything in my fucking power to make sure that girl got herself together. I call, I'm calling my insurance thinking I use my goddamn, um, what is this shit called? Uh, roadside assistance. Roadside. I'm, try, I'm trying to do everything in my power. I'm calling family that I know I got up there. Like, hey, what's good? What's popping? Hey. <laughs> like, I'm doing everything. Like, it's just the small leads to a fucking giant. I was never asking some of the people that I, the company that I kept back in the day to do something that was far-fetched. Can you just come to my show? You don't have to pay nothing. I'm opening up for, at that time, the the Red Sean was popping. Um, Rich Homie Kwan, I was doing shit like that. It wasn't like I was doing no little girl shit. ain't like I'm doing, like, oh, I'm, I just paid to perform. Mm. I wasn't even doing that back then. So, like, it was just like, they just gave me a lot of excuses and stuff. And I wish they could have came with me because they would have made a lot of money. Mm. Do you look but, at it? What you said, but 
I still have some homegirls, some D ones that are still around. It's like three, three of them that I still could call to this day, and they'll be there for me. But the other ones, they had their own goals and shit. But I just want them to know that, like, hey, I wish I would have stayed because ain't no telling what beauty we could have made to this day. Like right. that shit would have been beautiful. Like matter of fact, it would have been like way up there more and I see them seeing shit on the internet now like they'll share Glorilla's post and shit and they'll be like damn I um I want me a group of friends so, like what the fuck like we had that like we just talking about that's crazy don't confuse me like that I'm confused at this point now like what are you talking about Facts. we was doing it before oh so they make music too or no no, they don't. They don't make music. But they just in the game. But you never would know. Yeah, yeah, I ain't yeah, gonna I say they gonna make music. I could have had a friend that make do business, to sell clothes. I could have had a friend that model. I could have had a friend that got down. Do whatever you, whatever you desired. So you could have started it up. I'm curious. So when you have like close friends now, right? Mm -hmm. And like probably you might not have known them as long, right? Right. But like, cause you can meet somebody, and then you know them for a short amount of time, and they show up like you knew them for your whole life, right? Does. Mm -hmm. Like I know it feels good, but does it does it trigger you in a way to think about like, damn, like I only known this motherfucker for six months and he he'll do the he'll do everything for me, but I got real friends that really turned their back on me. Does that make you think about times like that? Yeah. Let me just say this. Shout out to Takira, Jamira, and TT. Let me just say that because I know some people are going to see this and be like, who the fuck you talking about? Any other thing else? Keyshawna, I love you. But, yes, because those people that I meet today, in today's time, I still characterize them as day one because day one I found your ass. I don't know if it was 20 damn one. From day one, I seen you. You held me down. We learned each other. Now we handling business. Now we going far. Yes, I wish I could have did that with a lot of more other people. But um life it is. Life is what it is. That's hard. I like how you break that down. I characterize them as day one because since day one I met you, you you, you was holding it down. That's hard. Right. That's a bar too though. <laughs> like, yeah, that's hard. That's that's something like who, who who was the character you said earlier? What was the person's name? Um it was a, a poet named who was it? Einstein. Einstein, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've been talking. We've been talking a little. Mm, we yeah. had some damn good we're conversations. Getting, we're getting into some shit, man. <laughs> Yo, um, left, right, you just dropped it. I'll right. ask you how the shit you go from friends being phony to having single release events and it's crazy. Um, It's just lit. Sheesh. It's, it's lit. It's, it's a different lifestyle. now. You and, can't have the style. You got to actually live it. It's a lifestyle. Yo, get, let's, I want to get into... um. Who the other character? The other alias, the cooking alias. Pat Papatuli. I want to get into Papatuli for a play about her. That's another reason why niggas probably like crying and shit. Cause like you cook for a man, you want to stay. You feel me? So you probably was you cook. What? Well, how, how long ago did you start cooking? Like really getting in your bag? Um, I've always been cooking. My mom, she was a caterer, so like I used to be in the kitchen for her. She had to get cut some onions up. I cut the onions, put it in there. So I've just always been like a student of her game. Okay. And now. You really be throwing it down in the kitchen. What's good? I be throwing it down. I ain't even saying I'm cooking no more because a lot of you bitches say I'm cooking for my nigga and that shit be ass. <laughs> you be judging people? I be throwing it down. I be, man, I'm Gordon Ramsay. You judging Ramsey. people plates? I'm Gordon Ramsay. That's crazy. I'm Pap Ramsay. I just came up with a new alter ego. I'm Pap Ramsay. Um, I be seeing y'all plates. They really don't be hitting on nothing. And I'm going to just let y'all know, my cooking show is finally finna go to the next level. I'm finna have special guests on my cooking show. I really hate that I didn't put my... um. My thought that I've been playing, because I've been planning to do this, actually, do my cooking show last year, but I was really trying to a tap into Pap A few people got Chanel. the cook, cooking yeah, shows now. now I'm trying to, I've been figuring out how to make my shit different, and I got the I got the proof in the pudding now, so I'm about to pop out with it. The pap is in the pudding. <laughs> the oh, I don't know. That's a bar. <laughs> the pap is in the, the yo, pap is in the pudding. I ain't gonna lie, you know who got the hardest cooking show, in my opinion? Trick Daddy. <laughs> Whoa, why were you on the same page? This shit is so hard, bro, because he say what he want. Like, I feel like if anybody else say what he's saying, they're getting canceled. Off rip. Yeah. Like, that nigga Cook is Daddy. crazy. Cooking show is crazy. It's fire. And he, yeah. another thing what I like about his cooking is, like, I like when people cook, like, like grandma cooking. Like, all this nowadays yeah. is about plating and, look like, his shit just look like it's good. I don't think it'd be the, it, it look 
it don't be looked it don't look the best it don't <laughs> But that's why I like it. I feel like that's like, that's grandma cooking. Like nowadays, that shit. Like man, everybody in Atlanta got a grass wall <laughs> with a fucking light behind it, and food is bullshit. Oh, fuck. It's like I'm sorry, you just tripped me out so like, bad. Take away the grass wall. Take away the parsley. <laughs> take away all of that shit. Give me some good food. He like said it don't be looking that good, but I know it's good. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, uh, I don't want to. Yeah, don't because know. he be cooking everything from scratch. Facts. And it's like it's an if you know, you know type thing. Only the people know. Like you gotta come home. Like you gotta be from that home. Homegrown cooking Facts. to know, like, this man know what the hell he doing. I like, feel like, no, no, I feel like I seen one of your Instagram posts. My shit homegrown. No, I feel like I seen a can Scratch. of greens going into the What you pot. about to say about my can? Because I said something about my can. What you say? I feel like I saw a can of greens. Go- That's not homegrown. I don't like that. Wait, what are you trying to say, sir? I'm just saying. You said you cook from scratch. It's homegrown. How the fuck am I going to cook a homegrown green bean? Bro, they got fresh green beans in the in the grocery Take store. Take me the fuck out then, because I'm not gonna be snapping no damn green beans. Bro, one, that, yo, one thing about my mom, she taught me. She was like, "Yeah, you can cook some things from scratch, but if you want to save yourself some time and it still tastes good, it still tastes like it came from straight out from the heart, straight from the garden." Go buy you a can of string beans. I don't have to go buy no hard ass string yeah, beans. Yeah, you do, bro. Oh fuck that! Trick Daddy not doing that. She Trick she, Daddy is not going to Kroger. Whole Foods or wherever he shop at and going over there by the Fresh Deli and getting the snapper beans. You bugging. Am I tripping? Y'all not getting fresh greens? Trick Daddy, do you go buy fresh free... Oh, I can't even damn say it. Green let me, beans. Let me do it, let me do it. Trick Daddy, <laughs> do you go buy fresh green beans or you buy them from the can? Nobody using canned green beans, bro. Nobody. I saw you... Po- I saw it in a pot. I'm like, how she, how she Pat Ramsey, she's still using canned green beans. I'm sorry, my mind is blown. I actually want to eat green beans <laughs> that came from a bag instead of a can now. It's so fire. Because I've never had it. For, you lying. Everybody that I know cook green beans from the can. Are I, you dead ass? I cook my collard greens straight. Wait, she being serious? Yes, I'm going to buy my... Bro, like, you my ain't never beans. had fresh green beans? Have Damn. you ever had baked um, um baked beans? Yeah. So they go pick the beans and then go put them in the pot then? No, they buy them from that. the can. Yeah, yeah, I probably can. But I'm talking about green beans and like... like like mashed potatoes, so you want, shit like that. Like you gotta peel the potatoes. I peel my potatoes. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm just making. You, you, you don't. Like I said in my you ain't, dad, bre- you ain't breaking the green beans, so I don't know if you peeling the potatoes. I don't know. I peel my potatoes. Nobi, tell them what I did. Me and Nobi went to Miami, and um, I couldn't end up cooking because we got too busy, and I had to buy like a big old bag, five pound bag of potatoes. I said, man, I'm taking my potatoes with me because I could do anything with these potatoes. I took my potatoes to TSA with me, oh. and I just boiled them bitches, and I made mashed potatoes. And guess what else I put on top of it? Cube steak. Okay. That's not- What's your favorite thing to cook? Um, What's my favorite thing to cook? Oh, I don't. Salmon. I don't discriminate, but salmon is my favorite. Mm. Salmon, I get me, like, some crawfish. And I saute my crawfish, and I put me, like, a little um, eat off on it, and I put it on top of my... Favorite dish to make when you're trying to impress a male friend? Spaghetti. You're not being dead ass, though. <laughs> like, what's up with you? <laughs> like, what the fuck is up with you? I'm just playing. Um, it's fucking, uh, what is it called? Uh, what's the what's the pasta <laughs> every girl make? Like, what is it? What is Bacini it? Alfredo? Uh, yeah, Alfredo pasta and <laughs> shit. Like, fuck out of here. Um, um, what would I cook on my man's first okay. date? You trying to impress him? I would cook him pot rolls. Pot roast with mashed potatoes, the carrots, the celery. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm dead ass serious this time. What the fuck? Pot y'all, roast. What the fuck y'all like, laughing at? You talking about like the 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 piece of like beef, like like meat, the piece of meat. Hold up now. No, that's meatloaf. I'm thinking. All right, all right. I'm thinking meatloaf. Like, yeah, what I'm the talking fuck? about pot roast. What's pot? What's no, pot what roast? the fuck you laughing at too? I'm what? cooking my nigga pot roast. What's pot roast? The thing. Nah, I gotta Google this. Yeah, shit. I'm gonna show you my pot roast. Nah, I wanna see my man pot, pot roast. What the fuck is pot roast? Pot roast is the shit. Nah, you want some bullshit. Pot roast is like a piece of beef that right, comes from a cool. cow. Oh, <laughs> this look cool. And you boil it, and you put the carrots and the shit in it. I see. It's look cool. I like that. My so, shit don't look so like if that. you so you telling me if you try to impress a man on the first date, you making this? Mine don't look like that. Mine look look fine. Mine look ghetto. Let me see this shit. Let me see it. You say yours look ghetto? Yeah. How you impressing a nigga with some ghetto shit? 
That's not bad. I, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. Go check my that TikTok. That look cool. That's Go cool. Look at my food. And look. That's cool. And if I cook a man's fettuccine Alfredo, it looks like that. Okay. Go check out my TikTok for all my cooking shows. Okay. All right. I ain't mad at it, yeah, man. Yeah, I go crazy. It's cool. I got good jeans in these hands. It's mindset. Straight from the heart. And it's in me, not on me. Wherever I walk, I leave my trace. Not for real, though. The FBI won't catch me. Okay. I fuck with it, man. Yo, so, like, what, what we got going on? We got um Left Right Out right now. Uh, we ain't left talk right no music. Left Right Out right now. Okay, so Left Right is out right now. Um, The video is about to release in two weeks. I can't tell y'all a specific date because, hey, just know. Just check my page out. Go on my page. Follow me. Turn your post notifications on. You're going to know what everything I'm doing. But after I release this video... Um, I'm releasing my first project of the year, Paptivities, this spring. Um, I have six songs on it. Yeah, six songs and two features. And I'm doing something legendary <coughs> on this project. When I say legendary, heavy on a legendary because I have Fred O'Bank mm. and I have this song called Who's Bad. And who you know? Well, who? And who you know who's bad? Who you got? On, on who you bad? know who's bad? It's just you? Who's bad? You? Yeah, but who else bad? Who who is the queen of being bad? Who's bad? Dun dun dun. Who's bad? Dun dun da da da. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you got me. Uh, oh, Trina. Yeah, Damn. I got Trina on a Who's Bad sample on the song. That's and crazy. That's legendary. That's hard. So y'all just gotta tap in. Um, I'm about to go crazy. Yo. And after that, I'm going to just say this. Last thing I'm going to say. This is the year of consistency for Pap Chanel. So I really need y'all to tap in. Like, I'm going to be more consistent than I have ever been in my career. And I really pray and I know for a fact because the law of attraction says whatever I put out in the earth, I'm going to receive back. If I believe it, I can achieve it. Okay. Amen. Dr. Pap. Martin, Martin Luther King like <laughs> why do I say that why do I be actually saying that okay. I'm gonna do my Martin Luther King speech real quick Noby hold up <laughs> so wait 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 before we get out of here before, since you've been in the industry right what's the craziest since you since you got a project named Paptivity what's the craziest Paptivity that you've ever gotten into since you've been in the industry don't hold back oh my don't lie God. either you lie to me one time that's it that's enough give me some real shit I'm gonna say this I walked into the studio and my CEO called me and said, now nah, you at the wrong studio. You have one of the biggest opportunities of your life right now. You've been working hard. You deserve it. What's going on? He said, come down the street and go to this other studio where I'm at. This is the address. And I'm going to just say this. Y'all already heard one of the songs. And I got another one on the way. So y'all really got to stay tuned. Shout out to Future. Big activities, pretty and paid. I sit pretty and I get paid. It's a lifestyle. You just can't have a style. You gotta actually live it. I'm sitting here with my homie Jay Hill, and we just made greatness. Y'all gonna be looking at this, and I'm put this in my biopic. <laughs> Nah, when not, I'm 80, okay? It's going to be hard. Who's going to get this like you, Jay Hill? Hey, <laughs> hey, it's going to be hard, man. So you, so basically, Pap Chanel, Future coming soon. We are, me and Future already dropped one song. Gucci Bucket had two years ago. Yeah. But I have a whole nother one, but nobody heard it yet. That's going to be crazy. When you I'm gonna, holding you gonna, on to that one. Sheesh. Why not just drop it? No. Future really like the Michael Jackson of this time. Future is that guy. Yeah. He's like, he's that guy. But that it's, ass. Uh, but what I will say is Atlanta niggas cho choosing Future over uh, Drake is crazy, but whatever. It's not my interview, it's yours. Damn, I got to take out my biopic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you choosing Drake over Future? I mean, you choosing Future over Drake? Yes. I mean, I love both of them, but like Future, man, like Future has a song for everything that I'm going through, like period. Me talking from being like... Drake is not from where I'm from. Facts. He's not he's not from my landfill. So when when I hear a future song, it speaks to my inner country girl, my trials in my era, my trials and tribulations. Future speaks trials and tribulations. Yeah, he does, but not like from the boondocks. I hear when I think of trials and tribulations. Not tribulation, from the trenches. I think of Boosie. Yes, that too. Not future. I think future. Lord forgive me, I've been on the rampage, Grand Reaper riding in a Rolls Royce, yeah, yeah. Spend a day to sober up, then I pop me one up. He can't pop out when he want with me. I'm popular. Yo, tell him how to follow you all that, man. Come on, man, let's get out of here.
Tell them how to follow me. I'm going crazy on TikTok on it, Novi. Hey, follow me everywhere. P A P Chanel. Turn your post notifications on. And thank y'all for tuning in. It's really appreciated. Love. Until next time. Mwah, 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 mwah. Gang, gang, gang is, uh, what is the Pat World? If you hate you just living in it. If you hate you just living in it. Yeah. Patrick on the way. <laughs> Baptivities this spring, baby. <laughs> you already know the vibes, man. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is rap. We out. <laughs>